Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the tricep extension. We're gonna have a look at the functional anatomy of this movement in the gym. So remember, the tricep extension could be the kickback, it could be the overhead extension, it could even be getting the pulley and doing the vertical tricep extension. We're gonna take a look at the three heads of the tricep and we're gonna see if we can focus or isolate any of these heads with these various movements. We're also gonna talk about whether, you've probably heard this a lot, whether supination or pronation of the forearm can play an important role in isolating the heads. But first we need to talk about the anatomy. So the tricep, which is tri meaning three, sep brachii, You've got the bicep brachii at the front, which plays a role in elbow flexion. The tricep brachii plays a role in elbow extension. So that simply means extending at the elbow. Now the tricep, like I said, has three heads to it. These three heads, the most superficial that you can see is going to be the long head and the lateral head. Now if you have a look at the tricep, you're gonna have the lateral head on the lateral side and the long head here the medial head actually sits behind and you can't actually see it in this diagram. Now, if we have a look at their origins, I've highlighted the origins of these three heads. You can see that the long head has its origin at the scapula. You can see that the lateral head has its origin high up on the lateral side of the humerus. And you can see that the medial head has a very broad and long origin going all the way down that humerus as well. All three heads insert at the olecranon, which is the elbow, and this is why when it pulls on it or contracts, it's going to extend the elbow. Okay, couple of important points here. Firstly, the long head is biarticular. That means it goes across two joints. So you can see that it goes from the elbow all the way to the scapula. So it covers the shoulder joint and the elbow joint, which means it plays a role in movement at two joints. And this is gonna be important when we look at certain exercises within the gym. So the long head, its functional role is this. Obviously, elbow extension, but also shoulder extension and shoulder adduction. Think about that, remember shoulder extension and shoulder adduction. So if we wanna really trigger or activate the long head, we need to extend the shoulder and adduct the shoulder. We'll get back to that point in a second. When we look at the lateral head, what you're gonna find is that the lateral head cannot be isolated alone from the medial head, all right? The lateral head is also a superficial muscle, and if we look at it in combination with the medial head, which is the deepest one, there's a very long point of origin here. The medial head is going to be the major head of the tricep that is gonna be activated at all times during tricep extension. So regardless of what you do, whether it's the kickback, overhead extension, or even the pulleys, you're always gonna activate the medial head. It seems to be that the lateral and long head get activated to support the medial head when we are encountering resistance. So adding weights, all right? Now, interestingly, the medial head in some percentage of the population, because all three of these heads come together to form this tenderness sheath that attaches at the olecranon, but there seems to be for a minority of the population, the medial head has its own independent attachment to the olecranon, and this may play a role in the medial head being able to be isolated in itself in certain extension movements. So we've done EMG analyses and we've seen that the medial head will be activated if I do tricep extension like this without any resistance and that the lateral and long head are barely activated. However, we start adding weights. What's gonna happen when we do this extension is we are gonna recruit these two muscles to help the medial head and stabilize the elbow. Now, here's an important point. When we supinate the forearm, so you've probably heard if you supinate, your wrists, you're gonna isolate the long head. If you pronate, you're gonna isolate the lateral head. Okay, there's a little bit of truth to this. This is what it is. Have a look at the position of my elbows when I supinate, and now when I pronate. What happens when it comes to shoulder adduction and abduction? When I supinate, I adduct at the shoulder and I bring my elbows in. What muscle did I say plays a role in adduction? The long head. So. Individuals, now you're not gonna necessarily isolate the long head, but you're gonna increase the activation of the long head if you supinate and extend at the shoulder and then do a curl. So that means in kickbacks, tricep kickbacks, the long head will be activated if the elbow is kept tucked in. Also, if you're gonna do a supinated extension with the elbow tucked, 
you're also going to be kicking in that long head as well. There is no way, so when you pronate, less active long head, it doesn't necessarily mean you're isolating the lateral head, it just means that it's less activation of the long head. The lateral head and the medial head are going to be supporting each other. Now, for most of us, the medial head is gonna be active at all times regardless of what we're doing. But for another percentage of the population, it seems that the lateral head may be the more dominant head. Why? We're not too sure. So, what's the take home message? When you are doing overhead extension, you are always activating the medial head. When you're doing kickback, always medial head. When you're doing tricep extension, regardless of wrist position or forearm position, always medial head it's going to be the longest one and it's going to play the major role with extension. However, if you want to more so activate the long head, so this is going to be this particular head here, what you'd like to do is supinate, keep the elbows tucked and you can do extension or you can do kickbacks. If you want to get the lateral head going, all you need to do is add weight. All right. So this is a quick run through of the functional anatomy of tricep extension.